Up next, we're going to talk about the Heisenberg Compensator on the Handy Guys Podcast. Right, so what are we talking about today, Paul, really? Brian, uh, no, I was just joking. This is actually, this is sort of a, a new fangled antenna. Okay. But what we're going to talk about is using, you don't need something that looks modern like this. I think this is really a marketing tool. But um, we're going to talk about using those things that if you ever drove around any neighborhood anywhere in North America and possibly the world in the 1970s, you would have seen one of these in every roof. And that was what? An antenna, an a antenna. TV antenna. A TV antenna. Everyone had one. This is a fancy one, but you don't need any. But nobody's looked anything like this. <laughs> right. They, they, what did they look like? How would you describe it? Uh, I'm going to put a picture up but uh, of mine in my attic. Or... Well, they, they're all sort of pointy, right? Yeah. Triangular shapes. So a bunch shapes. of rods. Right. And you know what? Right. That's what I have in my attic. As do I. Right. And so we're going to talk about how you can get the highest quality television signal possible possible bar none using technology that's well at least on the receiving side that goes back <laughs> to the beginnings of tv right that's right all right so let's give out our contact information all right so just go to our website handyguyspodcast.com click on the contact tab all the information is there or you could just email us us at handyguyspodcast.com so brian here's the deal yeah. People are not aware of this, but if you get satellite TV or cable TV and you buy the HD package, which I assume most people have these days, sure. I'm not even sure because I don't have either, then you get a high def signal, but it is highly compressed in most cases because the cable company or the direct TV only has so much bandwidth to deliver all of their channels. That's right. It's only so big of a pipe and they try to get more and more channels into that same size pipe. Right. It costs them a ton of money to launch a new satellite or to, to change from uh, copper to fiber or something like right. that. And Even on Fios from uh, Verizon, that's popular in our area. It's, it's still, still compressed. compressed. Okay, so, you know, it, now they compress certain channels more than others. That's they right. try to, you know, if it's a sports channel, they try to compress it less so that you can get a little more That's detail. That's right. The game show network gets the most compression, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> you know, Chuck or whatever who's spinning the dice or whatever he's doing, <laughs> right. uh, you know. Uh, Chuck Woolery. You can't see the thing. dice, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, um, but here's the deal. The best known secret. Now, this, this applies whether you have cable or not. You can put an antenna in your attic. If you don't care about, you know, if you're slumming it, you can put it on your roof. Right. <laughs> you know, if you don't, which, if you don't mind the look, which I'll or do eventually. Just some you know. people put, you know, some antennas that don't look as uh, stick out as much. They'll stick it on the side of their house, sort of like a dish network or something like that. Right. You can pull in, depending on where you live, over the air channels. Obviously, it's the broadcast channel, so it's going to be your major networks. ABC, and CBS, NBC, Fox, Fox PBS. And PBS, and if and you have local others. networks like independent channels, usually we used to call them the UHF channels right. in, your, in your vicinity, you can pull them in, and not only right. that, you can get them uncompressed, and they look awesome. The quality right. is phenomenal. Right, so all, depending on the network, they broadcast either what's called 1080p or 720p, or 1080i. Right. So depending on the network, they have different uh, formats. But the point is, all those formats are going to look better than a compressed signal of, of equal value. Right. So a 1080p, highly compressed, is so not going to look go good out, as an uncompressed If you've got version. your HD TV, and if it has a tuner, because there was a few that came out right. for a while that didn't. Oh, okay. But if it had a tuner... So you need to you have an over-the-air OTA, or what do they call it? An ASIC tuner, I think it is? Right, ASIC, yeah. or over-the-air tuner. If you have that in your HD TV, and you got something like this for, you know, 59 bucks or whatever right. it this is. This is just an antenna that has a coax connector. And you plug right it into your TV, you're going to get all of those channels for free. Right. No cable box, no nothing. Right. So the question is, though, Brian, if you want to do this, let's say you want to cut the cable. You want right. to, and we've talked you know, about that in the past. We yeah. have an audio show hey, on it. I find, you know, I watch uh, football games most of my time, and maybe right. I watch from this old house on the weekends. Oh, right. by the way... That's all free over the air. Why am I spending $100 on cable or more? Exactly. I cut the cable. It's been almost three years. So I yeah. had Dish Network. Right. And you still have internet, so you have Netflix or use a Roku box or something like that. Exactly. But 
you just want to get those broadcasts. Now you can watch the Super Bowl or live TV or your news or right. PBS. And your picture quality is better than your yeah. numbers. So, so how do you go about it? Well, the, the issue is that depending on where you live, right. you may have better or weaker signals and you're going to need mm -hmm. different kinds of antennas. So the way I looked at it is I wanted to not have to put an antenna on my roof. I didn't want to have to deal just just both the insulation. Homeowners association, yeah, maybe people maybe. complaining. Um, or the, the wife factor, right? right? The aesthetics. It changes the curb appeal of the house, right? <laughs> right. So I wanted to put it in my attic. Uh -huh. Well, the cool thing is there's some websites you can go to. I went to a website called solidsignal.com, and I put in my, uh, my zip code. And I put in um, information you put about in your my house. address. Yeah, well, I think no. I just had to put in my zip code to get to figure out what kind of antenna. Okay. I had to put one, my roof material if I had asphalt signals or some other uh, material. I had to put information like if I had plenty of room in my attic or I didn't have much room okay. or if I was planning okay. on putting it on the side of the house or the outside. Right. All that information, and they recommend an antenna that you need based on your area. So and they it make tells it you probably also because there's another one that I've used. We'll talk about briefly. Yep. But they probably say, you need this big of an antenna or this configuration of an antenna yeah. to get through to these channels. Right. But if you go to the next better antenna, you might be able to get a few more channels. Right. There might be another town that you can pull in signals from. Right. So the signals are out there. You just got to pull them in. I was able to put in a standard uh, antenna, which we'll show a picture of. It's like the old-fashioned, what everyone had on the roof right, in the right. 70s. I put it in my attic, which is an unfinished attic, and no one sees it. I don't care. I mounted it from uh, one of the beams. It's out of the way. The coax was already run up there when the house was built. There you so go. I uh, made it easy. Yeah, I connected it. Now we have a particular problem in our area. We got to talk about VHF and UHF. Yes. <laughs> Back in the day, now it's funny because younger people don't know what we're talking about. We just we. Do you remember the? Di did you have the dial yeah. at the top and the yeah. dial at the bottom? Yeah, <laughs> two dials. So you had the dial. You had to turn yeah. it to VHF, and then you to get your three yeah. through twelve, and then you'd put it on like. Oh no! I got. Zero. I want to turn it to channel fifty-seven. You and need to turn. You, right. And your dad and would you'd yell turn at the you. Other way, right. <laughs> or you'd get yelled at for turning it too fast. Right. right? <laughs> yeah. So in the old days, right. you knew if you had an old-fashioned TV that you you pulled channels either on UHF or VHF. The VHF is a very high frequency. UHF is ultra high frequency. Right. They're different bands of uh, delivery of channels, and typically. Your major networks were on VHF, your independent channels were on UHF. That changed, I guess, based on uh, your city and town. However, now most of the HD networks, so let's say a, a network channel is channel six. It was a VHF. All the low numbers were VHF. A lot of times in most cities, when they went to get their, their channel for UHF, they would deliver that channel on a high bandwidth. So they would become, say, channel 28 or something, making okay. it up. Okay, okay. So in a lot of areas, most of your high def channels that you're going to bring in, and they're all high def now. They right. can't deliver an analog in the in the low def anymore, right? They've gotten rid of those frequencies, I believe. Okay. You have in most areas, you just need an antenna that can pull in the higher frequencies, the UHF channels, right? Right, right. Where we live, and, it's a little different. And other, if there's a few other markets as well, like us. Yeah, there's so you some need others. To check. You need to check because if you have VHF, the antenna is a little different. And yes, in some case, is. you have to combine two antennas and use a bridge between the two. Um, so you want to go to one of these. What's the other sites? Antenna Web. Antenna Web. Antenna Web is the other site. They'll help you decide what kind of antenna you need, whether you have VHF or, or UHF. And then it gets a little bit more finicky. You can have a low band, a low frequency VHF versus high. So they say the channels nine and above or eight and above. A UHF antenna can sometimes pull them in, but it can't pull in if they're broadcasting over the lower end. Right. So you need to do your research because it can be a little finicky, but once you get it right, you're good to go. You're not you're paying anything go. for those channels. Right. And I suspect that the markets that are older, as far as older TV markets, are going to be the ones that have that yeah. sort of mixed UHF, right. VHF. We're in the Philadelphia market. It's one of the earlier markets in the world to have television signals broadcast. Right. Us, New York perhaps, uh, yeah. and other East Coast cities. And also there's a lot of interference between cities, so they have right. their different ways they do that. So try one of those websites. Get yourself an antenna if you want to cut the cable. You can do it. I'll show a picture. I've already shown it uh, in my attic, how I have my antenna mounted. 
but you know this is a traditional antenna. If you don't have a, an attic, you can find fancier uh, antennas like this. Sometimes they can be mounted on the side of decks or homes, sure. and they don't look. You know, right. people will hardly even notice. They think you have like a something cool, like a dish network or something like <laughs> right, that, right. or some sort of satellite thing. And yeah. and Could if be. you're close enough to the towers, you can use rabbit ears. Rabbit you ears, You can right? use the old-fashioned. Hold it. Where is it? Do you have rabbit ears? Here it is, Paul. I'm going out of frame, but. Uh oh. You can, can you use one of these. There, there are people that have tried. You can actually use an, uh, a coat hanger. And in fact, there's YouTube videos on if you want to really make your own antenna. And some of them work great. They just a two by four and some bare copper wire. Yeah. And a, uh, uh, I think there may even be some other parts, but they're not that difficult. So you can make your own. So antenna. it depends how close yeah. you are to the broadcast towers. Exactly. So you want to check those websites because if you're further away. And the away, other thing you're going to want to check, if you're going to go down this road, check our audio podcast from a year ago or so on cutting the cable because there we talk about DVR options yeah, and I'll how to get your to other content. So how you can record those shows and still maintain that high depth. Right, you have all those, what is it? Uh, you have Netflix, you have, you have what's the one, the broadcasters? Well, those are streaming things, right? right. So Hulu, Hulu or Amazon Prime yeah. uh, has a thing. But we talked about Myth TV, we talked yeah, about TiVo record, and other you. DVRs that can record right. that stuff coming in on your home signal or the broadcast signal and you can store right. that so right there. So if you there. still want to record into a DVR, there are some yes. uh, products out there. And, uh, that and we talked about it, them so. last year. So. All right, so there you have it. Cutting the cord, getting free and uncompressed HDTV. Very good, thanks.